the players have gotten way too much of a pass. And Bull brought it up yesterday. I 100% agree with him that we look at the coaches – Coming off a bye week, they're flat, but in the trenches yesterday, Miami dominated both sides of the ball. They ran the ball down Cleveland's throat. This is the fourth time. Let's take, uh, I think, 94, Steve. Let me pull up a stat for you guys. I was looking up. Uh, let me find the Jedrick actual Jedrick Rules stat. just got called for another holding, by the way. <laughs> 71. Just, just, just now. He's not good. They've given up 160 Trash. rushing yards good. in four of their last six games. 160 rushing At yards. At least. You take it full. Right? At least. Here's their last six opponents. The Falcons ran for 202. The Chargers. The Falcons. Oh. And, they, and they're the ones that they exposed it. Yes. They figured out what we were. Oh, they got no defensive line. It took a couple weeks for teams to figure it out. But since then, Ooh. PFF came show. out. Three of those teams, oh, by the way. Oh, let me guess. Garrett, Miles Garrett was the highest rated PFF player of the week. No, he was not even the highest defensive yeah. player on the Browns. The highest grade overall for the team was a 73. It was oh. DPJ. Oh, that's so, incredible. Yes, 70? the coaches do deserve a lot of credit for not putting him in the right positions. The game plan, as G mentioned in the cold open, was very questionable at best. But I do think we are giving the players way too much of a pass. And we're going to do something no later in the week. I'm going to tease this up for you, Bull. And I want you to go. We're going to do something, I think, Thursday. It's called expectation versus reality. We're going to look at each player on the Browns, what we expected this year, what we've gotten. And okay. the number of players who have come up way short on expectations is staggering. I think so we're going to do that the on only Thursday. Guy that's hit expectations. There's only a couple. Don't, don't go into it now. We're going to no, get to okay, it Thursday. That's fine. That's a nice, that's a nice hey, one. Hey, did you guys, did anybody. That's a nice one. I like that. After game. the game ended, did, did anybody switch over and watch. The end of the Bills. We were, like, on, the post, yes. we were on the post game show, yep. but oh, that's yes. right. Updates. Okay, so so the one thing that I, I was first of all it was the best best football game of the year. It was it was unbelievable. If you have time, you can go back and just pick mm-hmm. it up at the like three minute warning. I saw it. Three minutes to go. I saw it. What I, as I'm watching that, and I'm watching one incredible play after another, playmakers on both teams High on level. both sides of the ball. High level. I'm looking at that going, oh, my God, the Browns are light years away. Uh, and what I what I noticed was, no to, and, and this is why I'm not going to really, the, yes, ultimately the players have to accept responsibility. But what I was figuring out watching that was, close. it's every player on the Bills offense and every player's on the Bills defense and every player on the Vikings offense and every player on the Vikings defense was stepping up, making these unbelievable Hall of Fame plays with the game in the, in the balance. And what I said was, that's got to be coming from the top because it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's everywhere. Well, let's that's, see. What, that's what fertile soil looks like. Hey, hey Jay, we'll, we'll see. I don't know that the Vikings have had that all fertile soil. We'll see what they do they're when, when things really matter. They're 8-1. Kirk, Kirk, hey, listen, they're playing great. Let's see what they do in the playoffs. Kirk, I'm still waiting for Kirk Cousins' first big big win of his career. I am too. Uh, but what what I'm saying is the point of the reason I bring that up, I'm not going to blow yeah. you know, his horn. and everything. What All I'm saying is, I'm watching two teams play a very, very big football game. And I'm watching players on both sides of the ball, on both teams, one after another. The guys that made plays man, that made me look, stand up, man, look, there were at least 10 of them in the last three minutes man, in overtime. You're right. Jay, yeah. It's in well, the culture. I mean, Those guys are okay, laying but, their life on the guys, line for the game. But the players, and I don't see that like, on our we, team. Can't, we can't just keep blaming the coaches for everything. The players have not played well enough. Now, some of it's talent, sure. Like I think the clearly the Browns front seven, they have swung and missed. Andrew Berry had, in that particular area has been a disaster. I would argue Awful. that in, in in terms of the secondary and the offense, I would argue that Berry's overall done a pretty good job. But in the front seven, he's been a disaster. They have no talent besides Miles Garrett, maybe JOK, and that's it. But he's been awful. But the secondary has underperformed, and lately. Honestly, the offensive line has not been good, and the offensive line yesterday was Big. awful. They well, gave Brissett no well, time to throw. Well, took a key piece out of it too. Well, I, well yeah, but, but he's been he's missed the last few games, and they've I been know. okay. He that was, was that so was bad. a scratcher too. You know what, Bolt? Yeah, so I know that this this goes to show you the delicate balance that that it takes to be a general manager in the NFL. I'll never forget overhearing a conversation. It was kind of a media gaggle. It was at a NASCAR race with Joe Gibbs, and this was shortly after Joe Gibbs had left the Redskins and had gone to NASCAR. And the NASCAR press was kind of befuddled by all of this. They were, and they were really drilling down on, what the hell do you know about running a race team? How, you know, and I'll team. never forget Joe's analogy was, Joe said, it's, it doesn't really matter the sport 
Come or on. the business. Keep coming. Good Keep CEOs coming. understand that if you have a weak link in a chain, the chain breaks Keep and coming. the machine stops. Keep coming. And so what he was talking about was, I, I love this analogy, and I'll never forget it. He said, in, in the racing world, it's just like the football world. In football, if you have a great quarterback but a terrible offensive line, you're not going anywhere. If you have a great defense but a horrible offense, you're not going anywhere. What you have to have is strength at every single position. If I have a great paint scheme and a beautiful motor, but a driver off the street, I'm not going to win. But if I have a capable driver, a capable pit crew chief, a capable engine and brakes, he goes, it can come down to a fluid line snapping with my team being in the lead on the lead on the last lap. And if I bought a cheap fluid line and it broke, the machine stops. And when I look at this year's Browns, they got enamored with the pretty paint scheme. <clears throat> Deshaun Watson and the big engine in Nick Chubb and the beautiful tires in the offensive line or whatever, however. But they neglected a key component of football. All of the people that have covered football for their life will always tell you it, it, the wide receivers are pretty and the running backs are fast, but it's won at the point of attack. Just like a war. It's won, that's why Woody Hayes loved history and war so much. It's, that's where the battles fought. And if you're notoriously weak up front, you're beaten. So, but their offensive line is not weak. I'm talking about the defensive yesterday. line, Bull. Defense I'm talking about yeah. the defense. No, no. The and offense of this team is not the problem. But guys, it's not no. the problem. They have tried addressing it. They, they, They've no just other, gotten it wrong. No They've other position. No other position. Go look at their draft history. Defensive tackle is the only position that they've taken a guy every year within the first four rounds. And they've missed. And they So either they can't identify talent or they can't coach the talent. I don't know which it is. But and they signed, they signed Taven Bryant in free agency. And he wasn't good in Jacksonville. And, could, could, they keep missing. It's not that they're not be, ignoring it. Could it be both? Absolutely, it could be both. <laughs> but or or you, it, perhaps if they prioritize, I think it's probably all more one than the other. I think I think some teams prioritize all positions. I've had a lot of general managers tell me the two key players in football: quarterback, guy that gets after the quarterback. After that, you can start prioritizing everybody else as two, three, four, five. But one is quarterback. One A is. The guy that gets after the quarterback. So if they prioritize their skill groups, maybe it goes like this. Quarterback, guy that gets off after the quarterback. Because they can Deshaun Watson. They made a big effort to go get that guy. They've got Miles Garrett. They have Jadavian Clowney. So those check, check. But where do they prioritize defensive line? So maybe then it's defensive backs. Then yeah. it's offensive line. Then it's wide receivers. Then it's linebackers. They go, they go then for, they go for the flash. It's defensive. On any, it's on, it's guys, defensive tackle. On, 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 any, on any good crew. On any good crew. Mm -hmm. It is the intangible pieces that make you great, right? The ones you got to be solid that, across the board. That just come in and do their job every day. So you tell me, you you short on the defensive line up front, right? <laughs> All right, you tried your picks and everything. They don't seem to be working out, right? There was a guy sitting out here. He still might, sitting. He still might. Sitting. He might have been old. Still sitting. Right? But he's still sitting there. He's a proven commodity. Yeah. Right. We ain't buying for five years. We just buying for a year. Uh, Let's see what you Fred, got. There might be. There's got to be more to it. Nobody has signed him. There's got to be something else to it. It might be because they, because everybody else, Bull, doesn't have the worst statistical defensive tackles. Can't worry about everybody else. The game. You know what the Ravens did? Gee, the Ravens were weak at linebacker. What did they do? They went out and made a trade for an all-pro linebacker and watched the Ravens win the division now. Oh, and guess what the Dolphins did? They went and got Bradley Chubb, and he paid instant dividends. Yep. Mm -hmm. What, what did the 49ers do? Go get give me Chris McCaffrey. Boom. And where are they now? It's not good enough. Simple. There's no uh, in-season uh, okay. moves. Well, that has nothing to do with Kevin Stefanski. I mean, you're no, talking about one doesn't. trade deadline. No, and three those trades. Teams, uh, those te those one trade deadline is what I said. Those three trades, what did those teams all give up? First round picks. The Browns don't have a first round pick to give up. No, we've already so. given all that away. My, my thing is. One, yeah, one for the, a quarterback, which yeah, makes a lot I'm, of sense. Well, that's, that's, I'm yeah. mostly talking yeah. about they had a trade piece in Kareem yeah. Hunt. That they decided to keep, and now they're going to get nothing for him. And guess what? How many touches did Kareem Hunt have yesterday? We'll pull up the stat graph they in one second. They but obviously it was not a lot. didn't trade him. They obviously didn't trade him because <laughs> they, they couldn't kept get him. much for him. Glad they kept him. <laughs> By the way, I'd like to Jay, see Jerome Ford. It's time to start seeing what Jerome Ford is. Jay, Jay, you know, so you're gonna you're gonna complain that they didn't trade Kareem Hunt yes. because they couldn't. Well, well I, 
they probably couldn't get anything better than a fourth or fifth round pick. So that what? Made you better than, it's more but than they're going to get for him now. No, that's not true because they're yep. going to get a compensation draft pick. Uh, oh, no, I forgot about that. That usually makes or breaks teams' fortunes. The compensation. Well, here. You what the have, fuck? You, you, what a you, fifth round pick they would have gotten for Kareem Hunt? That was going to make or break their you fortunes? You don't know it would have been a fifth round pick. We've talked about well, Kareem Hunt been? like he's one of the top backs in the league. Yeah, but if they could have gotten a good draft pick for him, they would have traded him. Of course here. they would have traded him. Uh, would all, they? I agree. Yes. All, all if, they could have gotten, if they could have got a third or a fourth. Did you hear anything fourth? about what the offers were? I, I don't think they got a four for him. So my I think thing they is, would have moved him. So, 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 so I, what's the point of trading for a say fifth this, or sixth round pick? No point for that. And this, can this is the point I was making about the James Robinson trade, and everyone was screaming at me saying Kareem Hunt's better than James Robinson. Okay, fine. I'm not going to argue that. But look at their production. James Robinson has outproduced Kareem Hunt. You were never going to get the third round pick. And, and I, you know, I was saying before the season, dangle him out there, see what you can get. Well, take me back to Dominican Sue. You had to give him no picks for him. No, but nobody wants him, Brad. He's not on any team. I know the I Browns have a bad defensive tackle. There's three other teams. Team 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 I'd like to tell you about this is bull. I can't look at everybody yeah. else. I got a problem. I need to reject. And why has problem. nobody? So, if he's so, the so, so, difference maker, why has so, nobody so, signed him? So this is what I'm. Maybe hearing. he doesn't want to play. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Maybe this he doesn't want to play. He didn't want to play for less than 15 million. That's what he didn't want. This is what I'm hearing. I keep hearing. Why you can't, you know what? I done worked in these offices and I done been in charge of 15, 20 people and I done been called on the carpet and they say, get, I can't make them come to work. They got COVID. He said, you better do something in today. That's the conversations I didn't have. So all this, put your hands up. Well, we can't do that because he wanted the money. Well, we're not going to spend this. Oh well, God. we're not going to. You sitting here telling me three and six is okay. Nobody has Nobody's been saying that, hold G. On. You're big, hold, you hold can't on. change a whole team around at the trade deadline. Hold they weren't. Hold and Dominic Sue was this. not turning Especially around his team. Number one Come on. well, well, let me talk, let me talk to you no and, and let you Go understand ahead. something. Yeah. You named yeah. me one person that's been taken out of the lineup. Who has been demoted for minutes? Quiet. It's crickets in here. There be one coach who's got fire. Quiet. Crickets. <laughs> you do the same thing and then come I, back. But I don't disagree with you about a coach getting fired. I listen. He's and they have demoted some guys on defense. Who? They had Who? some. They had some linebackers starting yesterday. I can't even think of his name. Who? The special teams guy. He was out there for I a lot of I can't think of his name. Yeah, Number 51. That. He made a nice, yeah. made a nice pass. I can't pass. Yeah. Jordan Kaserik. Or Tony Kus- Fields was out yeah. there missing tackles. Yeah. Yeah. Green so they, Williams I mean, is a ghost, right? These people. Jay. He got benched. Jay. Who do you want? Jay, Jay. Jay. Who, do you, gee, Jay. who do you want them to start? Their defense stinks Jay, give me my front. Theme the music. backups aren't any good either. <laughs> I, I cut. Listen. See? Give me, yeah, give me that theme music. My theme music. By the yeah. way, go break my soul. <laughs> my theme me. music. You, gee, do you re- <laughs> gee, do you really believe that Dominic and Sue is going to make a difference on this team? Yeah, you know what it would have made? Heck shit. Yeah. We'll never know. Heck shit. Yeah. Then why is nobody signing him? Yeah. Why is no team signing him? Heck shit. Yeah. I don't go through life, boy, looking at other people, what they're doing. I wonder if he's just waiting until December. <laughs> yes, you are. Every comparison you make is what other people do. Watch this. Hold on. What the next dude did do. I'm going to go to I just look at what I need. I'm going to give you one comparison. If Tyreek Hill played for the Cleveland Browns, would he have the same amount of yards as he does now? No. No, you wouldn't throw it to him yes. that much. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. He had 1,200 yards. What does that have to do with the Dominican Sue? Here's the point. I don't know. We, 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 I'm, I'm showing you and I'm comparing. You By the way, we saying, keep bringing up this Odell Beckham nonsense. His numbers weren't that much different than he was in Cleveland, and he was playing with a much better quarterback, and he was the number two receiver there. That's a big difference. No, 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 mm. no, no, no. Mm. He, yeah. he got to. That's he, all true. He, he has mm. seven touchdowns mm. in one year, halfway half year. through the year. Half a year. And a much better this, team, G. Uh, uh, mm. uh, this, how many, in how terms many? of his, in terms of his catches, it wasn't any different. Yes, he had mm. touchdowns. I give you we, that. We, we what, 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 but we, that has on. to do more with the quarterback. In than fantasy the, than football, the, in fantasy football, yeah. what do they do? They prioritize catches or touchdowns? Touchdowns, because that's what matters. Don't tell but gee, that has more to do with the quarterback and the team. It's a lot easier for Odell to catch touchdowns off when he's street? playing with the best receiver in football. Off the street? He played with the best receiver in football. So, in tell, so, so, okay, that's an excuse for Odell. Can you tell me why your boy Nick Chubb, the best running back, how many carries he get last week, Bull? Six? Five? Gee, in the, they were down 20 points. How many he, they t- weren't running the ball. How many they ran it too much hundred? this week. Seven. The Dolphins are terrible against Seven. the pass. Come on now, stop uh, he had 17, they took an L. He had 12, they took an G, L. He, G, go back to that were, stat, bring it back. I just want to give him a Jesus. You're better than this. I'm better. I, wanna, I am better. The I'm just trying stupid. to show you. 17, you took an L. G. 
12, they, you took an L. Three, 16, three, three, you took an L. 11, you took an L. He got over 20. So they should have just let him run it the last That's, nine I, times I, yesterday. So, so they if they he would have ran nine game. more times, they would have won? Hey, listen, I'm telling you, here, I'm going to talk to people in the locker room. Let me, ju- let me just say this. Let me <laughs> no, just no, say this. Answer the question. 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 If they would have ran nine more times, would they have won? If, if he would have ran nine more times, would they have won this game? Who scored the touchdown? I'm asking you a question. Go if he would have ran nine more Jason's times, would the Browns have won this game? They still, they still gave Anthony, up 39 go to Jason's points. Face. They gave up 39 get points, face. fool. Okay, so it had nothing to do with it. <laughs> so, so in so fact, give it to wait, gee, through, three quarters, <laughs> for, through three quarters, the Browns were 50-50 passing and running in a game they should have been throwing the ball more. Yesterday's game had nothing to do with touches for Nick Chubb. I, I, and as I'm, much as I love him, as I'm much a, as I love him, his fumble crushed them last night. Well, well, that fumble by Nick Chubb crushed them. See, I don't come out often. Now, I say I'm the least yeah. connected dude in the world. I didn't hear from two mm. to three. I didn't hear from two to three players. Two to three. Have no confidence in this coaching staff. So we'll take that to the bank. Well, maybe we'll, got, I got no confidence in those players. Maybe they I, need to play better. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. And this is what we were talking about yeah. before. I done played on teams. Brad done played on teams where there are guys this who are looking to get you fired. This ain't a fantasy league. Because the calculation <laughs> is this. I get, I know what the cap penalty is. You ain't trading me. Right. I, you ain't trading Denzel Ward. You ain't not trading Miles Garrett because they contracts can't come off the books. So when you make the calculation that, all right, well, maybe players aren't playing as good as they're supposed to. No, I would have been in a locker room. People didn't sabotage people. Oh, you yeah. think I'm running down backside? Oh, yeah. You think I'm about to give my whole heart on this line when I don't believe in you? That's the reality. People will get you fired because they're like, look, I'm going to be here, dog. McNuggets, give me a five-minute poll real quick. Five-minute poll. Yes, sir. What do you want? How many <laughs> wants that fanski out? That's a good question. That's a great poll question. I'd like to see. Let's I'm, get I'm, to it. They're going to be prisoner of the moment, of and course. my guess is <laughs> it's going to be 70-30. Fire them. I actually saw a poll yesterday. We're going to take one chops, right now. <laughs> Go this ahead, guy on Chops on Twitter did it. Chops is a guy who covers the Browns. And he does a lot of stuff on on Twitter. What's that when you do the Twitter live? Whatever it's, it's a poll. Twitter, Twitter spaces. Oh, yeah, Twitter yeah. spaces. By the way, the, uh, the timer is running. Poll. The right. the chat. He did a poll. And, and shockingly, come in when the timer's 80% off. Eighty percent of the fans said to not fire Stefanski. I was wow. Okay, okay, that is a surprise to me. Yeah. I would I would expect yeah. that you know now if you took that poll after the Cincinnati game, it would have been ninety nine percent. What that shows is it's the the fans are fickle. Prisoner We're of fickle. the moment, yeah. of course. And when we never yeah. get to drink at the bar but we're always standing in line to get in, you, you lose patience. And, and Mikey, when and, you take that when you take that poll in the chat, get some of the comments from people. Why? Tell me why you want him out. Or right, why chat, you want to you, keep you him. You heard from Brad. We want to hear from you guys. Yeah, they tell us why you want to keep him, why you want to fire him, and vote in the poll. If you're not on, go to our where, – where do they have to go to get that? YouTube? It's on the YouTube chat. It's yes. on the YouTube chat. So if you're watching another format – if you want to participate, go to the YouTube channel. I'm going to read five comments. And five best comments we're going to read, too. All right, let's go. All right. I, to me, I, to, when you, if you talk about Stefanski, and I look at all the other coaches that we've had, I can't differentiate. Like, you, I, I don't know how he's. Well, Stefanski's got a winning record, G. Those guys, none of those guys do. And it's funny. I mean, you said 80% was the poll yesterday. There's five of us. Four of us say keep them. One says fire them. So it's eighty yeah. percent. Keep them even on our poll, even on our panel. Hey, but 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 by, by the way, the the longer he goes in the season, without making any tangible, visible changes, his 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 poll is going to go down. Well, before his we, approval is going to go down. We, before before we do, you know what we have we, have we haven't what we haven't done. Go around this panel. Tell me why you want to keep him. I want I, I want to keep him because I do believe he is top tier offensive mind in the NFL. I, I, I believe that. So, and, and if you, it, it bears it out when you look at the numbers. So let me just ask you a question. But, 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 is but, coaching, is head coaching just offense or is it coaching the so, entire so show? I, I have a caveat with mine. I want to keep him, but there is a but. Okay. He has to bring in a defensive coordinator that produces. And I don't want JW to hire the defensive coordinator. I don't want <laughs> Jimmy Haslam to hire the defensive coordinator. Do <laughs> I don't want Paul D. Podesta anywhere near that move. The problem that I'm seeing with the league is we've moved Ivy League. The the, the yeah, NFL you said that before. has taken the, the reins of the game from the uh, people that have played in the trenches and that have an innate feel for it. Yeah. 
I respect your innate feel for professional sports. Mm -hmm. I, I, I respect your innate feel for highly competitive sports because you've lived it. The problem that we're getting to in the NFL, and I'm looking at these coaches. A lot of these coaches even physically look alike. Yeah, Miami's, yeah. Cincinnati's, yeah. Cleveland's, yeah. San Diego. They're all the same guy. Yeah. They're skinny, small, white guys that didn't play football that got an Ivy League degree. Yeah. I watched, I watched, I said San Diego, I watched the Chargers coach, Mr. Brilliant, coach them out of a playoff spot last year. <laughs> Plain and simple. He made a wrong calculation and his team missed the playoffs because of it. Yeah. Yeah. I watched Cincinnati. And plenty of meathead coaches have done the same, Jay. And they have. Plenty well, of meathead what coaches I'm saying, have done the same. The point that I'm making with this is yeah. the league has made this, because it's a copycat league, man. You have success with one in one oh. spot, and the next thing you know, there's a bunch of Ivy Leaguers running the show. Z, why you want to keep them? Uh, how much? How many NFL games did Bill Belichick play? By the way, played the game though. Played it at a pretty high level. I mean, he played, he played collegiate football. Play his father, well, his father was a lifelong successful coach. And trying to say that Bill Belichick, I'm not saying he had to play in the NFL. Nope. I'm just what I'm saying is, I want to see like the Jeff Saturday thing was so intriguing to me. This is I said last yeah. week. This is the most interesting petri dish experiment i've ever seen mid-season in the nfl because you have the establishment i i thought it was really unfair some of the shots that jeff saturday took last week he took a lot of shots i i was shocked that bill cower took the shots he took, took. Shots. bill cower was maybe the most vocal voice against hiring jeff saturday hey, that joe. i've seen bill joe Cowher, joe thomas. Thomas. what did he say that was weeks. unfair joe, joe thomas slayed him because joe thomas slayed him bill cower slayed him. What he said what was unfair is, oh, you're not going to do it by the book. Yeah. You're going to you're you're going to go outside the envelope. What you're going to break the paradigm? Yeah. How dare you? That's insulting to all of us coaches. Hey. He's everybody laughed at Thomas Edison until the light came on. He he's, what, tell, so he's tell, telling so, you he's so, telling you so, they've been saying with coaches it ain't about how good you are as a coach. It's about is you in the fraternity. Can you leave the men? When you coming up through that rank, yeah. it's a fraternity. Now here, the you don't reason, think it's a slap in the face to coaches for handing no, this guy a job who's never no. paid his dues? No, I don't. I don't care about paying dues. Two things can be true. It's why Jeff I Saturday's a chat. Hall of Fame pay player. Well, of course, it's a slap what? in the face to coaches coming up the ladder. But it does if it works, okay, it doesn't so matter. Yes, it is. So, so so what? So, so two things, things can be true. So so when somebody so gets passed over Jeff for Saturday. a job because let's, of the color of their skin, let's get off Jeff Saturday and get all back to Stefanski because I don't give a damn about Jeff Saturday. I got the. By the way, Kevin Stefanski. By the way, guys, Kevin Stefanski played played football in college. So let's not make it Z, tell me what you got. Right, get the poll results today. I'm going to tell you what why why. We do have the poll results. And this wasn't going to be what the it's a typical five saying, minute UCSS poll. It is a five minute UCSS poll. It's five internet key. comments, and whenever the internet talks to us, it's brought to us by our dear friends over at PCC Airfoils. Looking for a job with career advancement and great benefits? PCC Airfoils is a leading manufacturer of in Northeast Ohio. All locations of PCC Airfoils in East Lake, Mentor, Wickham, and Minerva are hiring for all positions starting at eighteen dollars and up, plus full benefit Ooh. packages, paid time off, and a signing bonus. You can apply online at precast. Number one in airfoils. Slash number careers one. Not to learn two. more. In our classic UCSS five-minute poll, we had 288 votes. Woo. Do you want to take a guess real quick before I read is, some comments? I'm going to say six. I'm going to say 75, 70, 30. Round that people want to keep them. Keep them. 73% keep them. Yep. 26% says no. Also, we want to welcome Drago3020 to the coaches tier Bang. membership platform. Oh, you And we got robbed. a couple comments to read here. Josh yeah, Z open. says, Give it a comment. I'm sorry, but I've watched the team fire coaches over and over. It's just as insane as not making changes. Kenny Miller says, Stefanski gets a free ride because of the Watson debacle. Del G says, Stefanski's offense is not the problem. His leadership is the problem. That's the problem. Bingo. That's the problem. Becky says, Thanks, Stefanski Steve. is probably the best <laughs> the Haslams are going to get. Keep him, but fire Woods. Demond says, I think Stefanski can call plays, but he lacks awareness with the temperature of the team. We see it objectively of what mm -hmm. obviously needs to be addressed. Defensive coordinator need to see Watson in before we make any moves. Aaron West says, keep him. Not his fault. Clowney or Garrett decided not to show up. Offensive, fine. We need a new defensive coordinator. And Charles T says, Stefanski played college ball as the son of a legendary Pennsylvania coach. That's right. So, and Zach Taylor, Taylor and listen, and, 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 and most and of these Zach guys, Taylor, these guys played football. Well, but you football. said they I'm didn't, not, I'm Jay. Not saying they didn't you were play calling football. them all nerds. Zach no. Taylor didn't go to an Ivy League school either, listen, and he played. He was a quarterback in college. He was, and he was a good one. Dayton, wasn't it? Yeah. I, no, it's Nebraska. Nebraska. Here's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm saying. I think. Yeah. 
and I'm not saying that it's got to be all one way or all the other way, but Andy Reid is kind of the, you know, the old school throwback guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the other guy, John Madden, to some of these guys that just understand the minutia of playing in the NFL for a long time. And Jeff Saturday, whatever he dialed into yesterday with his club, and he clearly dialed into something, it's, it is about leading men. Yes, it's about X's and O's and all of that, but we've all played on teams where we looked at the coach and his dead, wet, dish towel personality yeah. and thought like, wow, man, so the spark's going to have to come from us, guys, because it's not going to come from him. Uh, uh, we didn't, we didn't have team meetings about that. Yes. Guys, we're going to have to – it's all yeah. on us It's today up to us. Because we're not going to – Look be, within. We're going to get a terrible call. I, I, tr- listen, we used to run the triple option. Talk about wow. a kid in 2000s playing for a team that runs the triple freaking option. On third and seven, you're getting the die play. It's like the wing team. Yeah. So what kind of what kind of conversations are you having with your teams? Like this is this is ridiculous. <laughs> this ain't gonna work. This is this, this is you know you up against the creek. And my thing is like this, man. And, and, and one thing that the analytics can't tell you is what's that? It, it, and I'm gonna go to what Jay said. These dudes is out here putting a body on the line. These dudes got CTE. These dudes could be going to the grave with life-changing things. Did you see the Derek Carr presser? Yes. Yeah. After the loss, he cried. If, if, if you haven't seen it, go go check it out. That's it. Jeff Saturday broke that man. Jeff Saturday, <laughs> who was breaking down tape for ESPN eight days ago, yep. and tweeted, "Man, the Raiders are terrible." Yep. Yeah. Yep. Actually they are. broke Derek. Car's spirit. He yep. cried at the podium. Yep. And and you know what? I felt for him. That's what, how much they care. That's he, how much. He and and what he said was he's pissed because he knows what this team, what players on this team, put in their bodies to, to be to able to go out there on Sunday to go to sleep at night. To go to sleep at night, and then we put this kind of effort forward. Crazy. It's a coaching problem Crazy. there too. They were picked to make noise. Mm-hmm. They've got the pieces to make noise. But who's the coach? And who's guess the what? Coach? And you ain't using those pieces. That's it. You're not using them, dog. And then here comes Jeff Saturday sauntering in, <laughs> taking public shots at the team that he plays and you first. Win? At their it's right. one it's game, one guys. Game, which guys. I one know game. it's one, one game. game. But, but, but it's not but, like he lost no, 48 to nothing, no, Jay, which so, the media would have okay, loved. So hold on. But it's not and everybody would have loved. It's not just one game no. to the people. Z, Z, that, Z, when you hear now, they get the Eagles you want next. To answer your question. Z, Z, they get the Eagles can, can next. Can we get back to the question? Yes, your question. If they beat the Eagles, yeah. oh, there's yeah. going to be a whole lot of people listen, backpedaling. Listen, yep. I'm off of Jeff Saturday, okay. Colts, and everything else. You want me to answer? Why would you keep Kevin? come back. He wants to come back. Why would I keep Kevin Stefanski? So, well, I'm by a hair. Well, I'll tell you why I wouldn't keep him because I his offense that is is dope. That's that people like by the statistics. I think there's all his offense is fool's gold. And what I mean by that is when I when I turn on the Dolphins, it, 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 you watch the Dolphins offense, you watch the Chargers offense, you watch any of these offenses. Kevin Stefanski is just running basic high school playbook stuff like that. Like at the highest levels, you think they're going to win a Super Bowl when we're playing, throwing the tight ends and that no, that's not what the game is, dog. Like the game has if you we've seen him against other teams, that offense looks innovative. What we're running ain't innovative. You can stop that by just running people in the backfield. I don't like his offense. I, I don't think it's that innovative. I could get somebody else. But the only reason I would keep him by a hair is this. I would keep him by a hair because I feel like I could get a change at defense. I feel like I could reset that side of the ball. And to their point, I'll give y'all credit. I'm not the biggest contrarian in the world. Deshaun Watson did say, well, I want to play in that offense. So for me, I, 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 can't, I, I wouldn't want to play in it, but I'm not Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson said, you know what? This is the reason I'm going to come here. And I pretty much, they probably told him, hey, if you choose us, we'll make some concessions, right? And Deshaun Watson, well, Austin left his other team in Houston because he wasn't involved. My point is, if Deshaun Watson feel that that's the coach he can elevate with together and get it to a certain point, I'll see it out, dog. I owe you the fact that you can see it out. And well, that's the reason. Come on, Jay. I agree with a lot of what you said. I, I think you're 
dumbing down his offense. Look at the trash quarterbacks he's had. He's gotten the most out of them. That's why he's throwing to the tight ends. He's got Jacoby Brissett and Baker Mayfield. They were trying to get away from the three tight end sets when they got Deshaun in. And when the suspension went to 11 games, now you got guards playing tight end. You're signing Farrell Brown. (laughs) So, listen, I can say everything everything you guys are saying about offense. I agree with all of it. Here's the thing. I, I, I know you kill him for this. And I actually think this is exactly what that building needs because that building is insane. And it's we've we've all read. Go back and read some of the stories in Sports Illustrated about what that building's like. I've talked to coaches who've been in there oh. about how the main thing is never the main thing. It's always just helter skelter, and it's it's just insanity. He's a steadying force, absolutely, and, and that's I, what they need. And I don't think it's a coincidence that their best season was the COVID year when everybody else was out of the building. They I don't think that's that very well. I don't think that's a coincidence. You don't. I think there's a lot to that. But I I, I like the fact that he is a steady hand. I like the fact that too. he isn't Freddie and he isn't he is an adult. He's an adult in the room and I think they need that. I think this organization needs that and I think we need to see this all the way through. I don't know how I've become the Stefanski apologist. <laughs> I've killed well, him just as much as you guys have. Really, I thought the Patriots game was pitiful. Yesterday was deplorable. It's here, an excuse. Here's how you become the Stefanski apologist because it is logical. <laughs> and well, I'm logic, sorry. And you're not an emotional. Yeah, I'm emotional. I think all, we're, we're emotional. Um, but at the, at the end of it, I'm trying to force myself to be logical. That's why I want to keep him. And, and here's and, the th- – and, and, go and ahead, go right. ahead. He, the offense is not the problem. No. Yesterday, I'm going to give you two numbers. Oh, we still got bull to get in, into. In yeah. the micro, <laughs> explain why they are where they are. They forced zero punts yesterday. The, the broadcast crew was making a joke that the punter could have wore a suit to the, to yeah, the game yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He never touched the field. That's crazy. They had zero takeaways. That's crazy. That's crazy. So, so I, Bye. W- when, when, it, when it seems like the dumpster is on fire, yeah. maybe it's cause you, it maybe all the trash <laughs> inside it, you have to get rid of, but the container is good. Fire won't melt that container. I think Stefan Some, is it, the container. I think it, that we, the offense with, when, when we get to Sean Watson, all of these little ugly warts are going to look like beauty spots. I, I believe that. Now, it's not going to happen in the six games that he's going to play this year. Okay. The, here's, it, you know, when the plane's going down, you can let go of the, of the, of the, of the steering wheel and say, well, we're going to crash. Or you can try to pull it up, and, and, and that's where they are. The plane is coming down rapidly. Boo, what you got? Now Hang they on. have to say, Boo, what you got? pull it up. Hang Boo, on. What Offense you got? is worth saving. Get rid of the defensive coordinator. Yeah. Start over next right, year so, with a new so defensive coordinator and Deshaun. One Watson. one other thing I, I just no. want to say, Brad, would you want them fired if they were four and five or five and four? Four and five? If they were four and five, if they're one game better, would we e- well, even be I, having this when conversation? I, when I get to my take, I'm gonna give you my entire Because take. here's not, the thing. Probably we're not, not. We're not six here. and we're four here. and five. We're, we're not, but here. here's the thing. You, you are what your record you is. You ask me a yeah. question, I'm gonna give you an answer. Well, you said you're gonna answer it. Your, yeah, no, bull your, before me, then I'm gonna give you my answer. All right, so but hang on, hang on. This is the point I wanted to make. You are what your record is. Yeah. There are three and six. You got to own it. You got to wear it. The game football is a game of inches. We all know that. They're a 58 yard kick in week one from being two and seven. You're right. Here's the it only all thing. comes out in the wash. Here, that's true. Here's the only thing I'll say. They had a catastrophic historic loss against the Jets that never should have happened. Fall on the onside kick and you're four and five. They had Baltimore one. They got a bullcrap penalty in the end zone that should have never been called. You're right. We saw push offs yesterday that were worse. Way worse than what Cooper did to in the end zone in Baltimore. Yeah. Now you're five and four. Yep. And it looks completely. Now you are what your record is. And you're three and six. You got to wear it. They're this close from five and four. They're also close to two and seven. I'm just saying this isn't to me. I don't look at this and say this isn't salvageable. And you can't make a drastic decision like firing the coach and starting all over until you know it is not. Let me get in here. Let me get in here. Go ahead. Let me get in here. Uh, it's it's rare that I have to fight to get in, but when when you're uh, <laughs> remote, fortunately I'll be back in the studio on Wednesday. I've been told now, so that's good. All right, so here's the thing: the the biggest criticism of Stefanski is he's too mellow. He's too, we loved him for that in the COVID year. Everybody yep. was lauding him for that, and now that they haven't played as well since, we're killing him for that. Uh, I, we always want the coach that's the opposite. We criticize him for his lack of leadership. On the surface, that seems like a fair criticism. And it may be, but none of us are in the locker room. We, I don't know that we learn about leadership on the field necessarily, especially on the offensive side of the ball. I think they do have leadership on offense. I think it's a major problem on defense. My biggest criticism of Stefanski right now 
is that they just coming off the bye this pathetic performance. And I think he's made a huge mistake not firing Joe Woods, as a couple of you have pointed out already. But I think there's way too many positives for me to completely give up. It's all a guessing game. Drafting players, hiring a coach. You never, we can always say, you want experience, you want this, you know, I want a nerd, I want a, a meathead. It's all a guess. You never know. Even if a coach has been great. You brought up Joe Gibbs before, Jay. He went for a second time as a head coach. He sucked the second time around. So you never know when a guy's going to be a good head coach, a good player. It's, it's very hard to predict. But ultimately, this offense, in my opinion, G talks about it being a boring offense. They, they don't throw the, – the the other two tight ends, David Njoku this year, when he was healthy, he was one of the I – I have no problem with them throwing to him. He's He's been one of the better tight ends. The other guys don't get that many passes. What's his name that, that we keep making a big deal about? Uh, uh, Farrell Brown has had eight targets. I mean, that's not a lot of passes going his way. So I, I can't get that carried away. They don't have great depth at wide receiver, although Donovan Peoples-Jones, one of the few pleasant surprises on this team, I think has been very, very good. But ultimately, I'm not firing him because you compared him to the Chargers and some of these other teams that have top quarterbacks. The Browns don't. They will. I think they have a, they're have they going to get a guy who was a top quarterback. Will he still be at the end of this year? He's by practicing next year, he this better week. Be. That's, that's, right. that's, you know. If he's, if he's not, then everybody's getting fired, right? And it's all, oh. But if he, is, <laughs> if he is still a top quarterback, then I think Kevin Stefanski is going to do an excellent job with him. I think this idea that he doesn't get the, the, the ball to his best players is is false. I think it's completely misleading. I, I, Nick Chubb, you may want him to be number one, and maybe this, and certainly we can make an argument for that. But when he's third in carries or whatever it is, or fourth, what he is, I don't know what he is right now. You can't say he's not getting the ball. Maybe he's not getting the ball enough for your liking, but he's still getting the ball plenty. Amari Cooper's had 69 targets in nine games. Did I mean, he play yesterday? Not... He must have been sick. I didn't see him yesterday. Mm-mm. Must have been sick. Was Amari, was Amari there? Did he make Did he make the trip to Miami? I mean, oh, there wait, you go. He, he, there guy's you go. not going to have a big game every week, Jay. I don't know what the, what are we to say. I don't know. I mean, that was his first. He's only had three quiet games this year. Not every, you know, he's not, he's not, Justin Jefferson. I mean, no, he's, he's a very not. good A buddy of mine a Cowboys fan said, you're going to love him for seven or eight games, and you're going to wonder if he's on the team for the other eight games. And, that, well, and that's, so far that, he's, had, he's had three. So far it's been six good games and three bad games. So, is it, I is mean, it, I don't know what to do. Even well, well, I'll take well, that. Well, Dallas is, I mean, you know, it's not, you know, is, is Dallas with their wide receivers are so fantastic? They, they never have bad games. I still I can't believe they let him go. I yeah. can't believe they let him go. Uh, is, is it my I time? mean, so I, I <laughs> think there's more good the, with bad than Stefanski. Brad's chopping at the bit to give his uh, ahead, Brad. why he would fire Stefanski. And I respect everybody's opinion. I do. Uh, you know, I, I take it from a different time. I'm not you know, I'm not looking at the season record four and five, five and six, whatever, five and four. It's irrelevant, right? When you're in this business, there are certain principles, and so a lot of it is gut. You know when you're in it and when you're out of it. And you know when people have the ability to do it. I, I'll give you a case in point, I, and I always, I hate to keep going back to my Chicago day. That's what the, you have. That's, but that's your I will tell you, the Bulls, we got to the Eastern, my last year in Chicago, we got to the Eastern Conference Finals, one game away from the championship, right? Two weeks later, they fired Doug Collins. Fired him. That's how Phil got the job. Because they knew it wasn't trending in the right place. You have to have the cojones to go ahead and do Whose it. Whose call was that? Was that was that Cross? That was Reinsdorf. It was call. Reinsdorf. That's you, when he came out the office. You come closer to home. They fired David mm-hmm. Blatt in yeah. first place. Yeah, but I said we're talking about something. <laughs> yeah. We're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking about crazy. something different. We're, and talking about, we're not talking about first place. <laughs> we're talking about this was a team that was ready to had to, made the investment into pieces, like the Browns had made some investment in some pieces. Needed some more pieces, but the person at the helm. But boy, they got it right with with Phil. But they went on the gut. This thing is not trending well. So if you look at all the markers here, it's not trending well. It's not. It's like the Dow Jones. You don't know what you're going. We buying (laughs) high, selling low. What are we doing here? Right. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you from yesterday's game. I see no more. I need to see no more. The person that's held accountable for not having them prepared to play. And that's holding your players accountable. Because to both point, it's on the players. 
but somebody got to hold a, a foot on the neck of the players. Do we agree that the players are not playing for they're, him? They're not. Yeah, they're, they're not responding. Because Bull, Bull, Bull's not point of him. you got to blame the players. They're some not too. responding to anything. Right, and and the players are accountable for that. But does anybody see? Like in, in in Las Vegas, it's obvious these guys don't care for their coach. They don't. They, don't, they just don't care. They're not playing for them. Are, do we have that situation here, Jason? I I defer to Brad on a lot of this because he was in the locker room and I wasn't. I have the conversations with guys. I've talked to people around the league. It's no, but what do your eyes tell you? Does you, do your eyes tell you these My, guys are playing for here's their staff? What, here's what the Jets are playing for their staff. The Giants are playing for their staff. I don't. Yeah, think... but the Jets coach sucked last year. They weren't playing. Were they not playing for him last so year? No, this year I know. But well, you know what? He made that comment about I'm keeping receipts, yeah, yeah, and his yeah. guys rallied yeah. around him. Yeah, and you know what? Our okay, coach, our coach but Jay, it's half a season. We're gonna do. It's better. half a season. Here's I the know. thing. You Go ahead, Jason. I I don't. I I think Kevin shows a lot more off the camera than what we see. I think we're judging this I hope so. wet rag, yes. wet towel, no personality. Yeah. Because Kevin just wants to get through a press conference without making a headline. He hates the media. That's it. I mean, he hates no, dealing. No, I don't think he, he hates I think the he media. hates dealing with the media. He, he doesn't hate the media. He doesn't want to make a headline. Right. He doesn't want it. Like, he just wants to get through it as fast as possible yeah. without. Say Be- nothing. Belichick's the same way. He's I mean, exactly the same He just way. doesn't want to make a headline. Yeah. But w- the guy he is in the locker room and off the camera, I think, is far different than what we see. And listen, all we have to go on is what we see. What, what we see. So I totally get making and that not assumption. Fair. It's so, not fair. So but I also think, Kevin. I'll go back to the play at the goal line. What was it, Atlanta, where they had the holding call and everyone killed him. Everyone killed him and said, yeah. how can you make that call? I was told... Brissett left the pocket like that wasn't the play call. Do you know? Jacoby left the pit. Do, once once Jacoby leaves the pocket and scrambles, when it was a clean pocket, he didn't need to go. Now you get the hold, and now everything goes no, back. No. But Kevin doesn't say that. Kevin just says, I have to be do better. You know, yeah. do, you, do you know how to get a player to respond? Do you not? No. no it, 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 Some it, guys it. use the media to talk to their no, team. No, no, no. Sometimes. But you know how you really get a player to respond? Let me take away from you. What you love to do. Yep. You can so bench the, a quarterback so, because so, he left so, the pocket? So, so the, no, no. I'll talk about Jedrick Wills. I'm tired to talk about that, right? Sit down. Jedrick Wills. Thank you. You sit down. He's, 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 I think he's, he's, a, a, he's a top you, candidate. You sit down. He's a top. And he, and when he, I was having trouble yeah. with the defensive backs, they did down. bench him you, yesterday. You, you they come did on, it. You come on in here. Watch this. You come on in here. They right? benched Jedrick Wills yesterday. When I, you guys are saying whatever they benched him, but they did. When I sit down on when I long overdue, he ain't starting next week either. When I sit down on coaches and you're not getting the job done, you're done. You stepping in here. I'm taking over for you, right? That's how I get your attention. And but you, you know what, to... though? I think I think at this case, it, it's too late. You can't turn the season around at three and six. But what you at, can... at, at, at three and at, you know but, what? But what you, you can't. You, 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 we have to understand this. It's three and six now. Yeah. But for every game they come out here and play worse. That's gonna. That's on your record. People are prisoner to moment, right? This is this is eight, this is. Why so, you go so, back to gladiators? So, so Z, school. before we go into the Cavaliers, I'm gonna tell you this. You know what players hate in the locker room the most? If we're in a situation you don't call a spade a spade. Call if it you, out. If you try to BS me and tell me that it, uh, it's this when I know it's that, and everybody in the building knows that, right? Yeah. So when you do that, guess what they do to you? Man, I ain't going out here hustling them. No I, I ain't doing that. No, I know. I'm That's why I'm that. asking. I'm did, not doing ha, that. Have we hit that threshold? Because you got me. You playing me guys. like a sucker. I'm out here putting my body on the line every day, and you, and you out here tricking me. Because right? you you look at it next year. Right, the, <laughs> Kevin. All you got to do this is very simple, Kevin. Simplistic. It's it's very simple. If you would have got rid of Joe Woods when he was playing around. Earlier, I, I I've been on since 2020. Early, where I say Joe Woods, he's not. He's he should be uh, with this defense. The longer he stays around, the longer people gonna look at you as the weakling mm-hmm. because you are in charge of him. That's right. If you would get rid of him, I wouldn't even be sitting here today talking about you. You know why? Because I would say he he's showing me that it's not good enough. But when you it have ain't to, good enough, that you have, you have to fo- you have to follow with the next line. Because when I get rid of Joe Woods, the, okay. ne- the next thing I tell people is this. One of y'all is next. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. It's, One of y'all is next. Shot. One more thing that we're going to turn to the Cavs. Um, I'm looking at the Texans game, and <laughs> you talk about a team that's motivated. Oh. First of all, a fan base and a team. The Texans know that if they beat the Browns, their draft pick gets better. Yeah. I think that's an incredibly dangerous game. I've been saying I, I'm that. I'm terrified for a month. of that game. I've been saying it for a month. Why this would is, the players care about that? 
The Texans well, players don't care about that. Oh, so I think they and do. They, 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 they Watson. They it, absolutely. First of all, want they want. They want Watson. just like Seattle wanted to prove to yeah. Russell Wilson. Right. You bet on the wrong. He pony. asked out. He left them. Yes. He yeah. wanted out. Right. Yeah. And so if I'm in that locker room, I'm saying, we we've got a chance to show this guy that he quit on us. Yeah, they've turned over a lot of their and roster. And he went to a team that isn't any better. And we're Who is even still on that roster? Well, I just said, Who's they've turned over a lot of their roster. And I'm not even talking about the players, Bull. I'm just talking about yep. the franchise. Human the nature. franchise. They, they, like, they, it's they're human horrible. nature. They, like, they, they got that start on them. And, and, and that, start. that game scares the hell out of me. At it home, does. This, I, I've said, but I think I said this on the, I don't know. This is not going to be LeBron walking back into Cleveland in 2010. But it's going to be in that realm. And at least in football, the fans aren't right on top of you right. like they are in basketball. But, boy, is he going to hear it. But it's going to be It's going to be very, loud. And, and, and that listen, game scares me. That's the gonna, only point I wanted to make. He's gonna, it's going to be a toxic environment every stadium he walks into yeah. outside of Cleveland. But it is. that one, it's and be for tough. it to be the first one, that I I don't think that's – Everyone's got looking at that as an easy win. win. I know, but they've been in a lot of yeah. games. I don't think they're as bad. I said it about Atlanta. I don't think they're as bad as their record. And Atlanta's turned out to be, I think, better than people thought. 